You know, somebody emailed me uh, just before class and wanted to know if I could talk about psychic tension. Psychic tension permeates everything. I mean, look, there's physical tension, you know, and there's psychic tension. Psychic tension is generated from the mind. It's chaotic, it's nonstop, it's intense. You understand? It really filters just about every part of a human being system and takes over. And it creates, you know, a very chaotic life for a person. And basically what it is, is an energy force that needs mastery. And one has to learn how to focus and use it in a positive way so that it builds a strong inner life for one instead of ripping one apart. It's energy of the mind. And we all know about energy of the mind and how chaotic it can be and how full of tension it can be and how it just kind of like a wild horse, you know, <laughs> running through a meadow, you know. It, it needs to be trained. It needs to be disciplined. We need to learn how to master it. And... You know, look, everything is tension. Every even the physical things are tension. It's everything is tension in life. So when I talk about negative psychic tension, it's when we take the tension and because of the very nature of who we are and what we are, our chemistry is inside, what we identify with. Uh, it transforms Shakti, energy, which is pure, into tension. And that tension is often used in a combative way with other people, arguing, fighting, having to demand power and strength and who is more important and et cetera, et cetera. That all of that energy is the energy of a chaotic mind. Now, I think all of us know what it is to have a chaotic mind. This is not you know, something that human beings don't experience. It's there. And unless it's trained and unless it's disciplined, unless we can take that energy of chaos and transform it into the energy of, you know, positive energy that helps to open us inside. That energy takes over, and it determines the way we live. It creates a lot of physical problems in people, because people's physical being isn't strong enough to deal with negative psychic tension. That's why I always say that if you want a spiritual life, you have to have patience, it takes time, it takes training. And I always say the only person we're up against is ourselves. We have to learn to master ourselves. And truthfully, negative psychic tension probably causes I would say 85, unless you break your arm or something, but 85% of physical problems will be caused by the chaos in the human mind. And that same energy that creates chaos is an energy that can heal us from the problems. We just have to use the energy consciously. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask?
I mean, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with tension. Everybody has it. If we didn't have it, we wouldn't be alive. Problem is that people, you know, that people use it in on themselves and with other people in a negative way. They get depressed, they get unhappy, they get sick, they get this, they get that. They get all kinds of problems. And instead of using those problems as a reason to grow and get closer to God and closer to your spiritual enlightenment, they, we wallow in them. We get depressed because of them. There's no hope. There's no, you know, I mean, all of that stuff that I'm sure everybody is familiar with. Either we ourselves have been through it or we know people that go through it. And of course, the answer, honestly, is an open heart. Gratitude, love, that's the answer. The negative psychic tension. Opening the heart. Experiencing lightness of being. And not wallowing in negativity and allowing it to take over and truly create, in many cases, impossible situations. Does anyone have a question that would like to ask? I mean, we have to learn to like and love ourselves. You want to get healed of any problem, learn to like and love yourself. Discover your self-worth, your connection with God and with spirit, and the connection with God and spirit comes through love. Comes through happiness, joy, not worrying about everything and creating, you know, situations that become major soap operas when they can be resolved, most of them very simply. I mean, the greatest healing in life is just literally becoming a happy person. That's that's the healing. And that'll permeate every single part of your system and it'll transform the person inside. Now, it's easy to say this, it's not easy to do this. And only because, as I'll repeat it, we're up against one person, ourselves, our training, habits, what we're, how we're used to and accustomed to responding to life. God is love. Three words. I mean, it's the greatest healing sentence in the world. <laughs> Open your heart. You know, love yourself, love other people, discover that life is this amazing teacher. And instead of getting upset at things that go on, you know, you maintain your balance and your love and your gratitude that life is teaching you everything that you need to learn. Just need to be strong enough inside to learn it.
You know, there's kind of a wonderful short story I read really years ago. I haven't read it in for 20 years or so. But a writer by the name of Leo Tolstoy, I'm sure you're all familiar with Tolstoy, called The Death of Ivan Illich. And it's really an incredible story of a guy who has everything, the perfect wife, the perfect job, the perfect, everything is perfect in his life. And he commandeers all this perfection. He demands all this. Perfection. And there's only one thing wrong. He has this pain somewhere in his gut that doesn't go away. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger. You know, and ultimately that pain in the gut made him realize that he really had nothing. All of the things that he thought was perfection in his life was just a bunch of bullshit. And ultimately, he realized he, at the end of the book, he, he becomes like a person who becomes a happy person. <laughs> he has nothing. And he's just really happy. And he had everything in the world. He had a totally successful life by attaining that happiness. He had the perfect family, the perfect job. He was a highly respected citizen in Russia, you know, everything that you want. And ultimately, he had a pain in the gut that was killing him. And through that pain, he discovered he really had nothing. It was all an illusion. And his heart opened and felt love and joy and happiness. And he had everything that life had to offer. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? Yeah, Stuart, I have a question. Yes, is, is growing in life possible without tension? No. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, I mean, life is tension. Everything is tension. Uh, you know, even our, the, the way our bodies are made up and our mind, it's all, you know, the atoms coming together and creating a body. You know, it's tension. Everything is tension. <laughs> but tension isn't a negative thing. We make it a negative thing. This intention is just energy that comes into us. And because of our past, the way we were raised, how we lived, the kinds of habits we have, what how we are conditioned as human beings, we tra transform that purity of energy that is creating everything around us into tension, into positive and negative. So the whole purpose of inner work is to build a system that's strong enough not to transform Shakti into positive and negative. Once it becomes positive and negative, it's tension. So we got to get free of ourselves. That's what this is all about, getting free of oneself. Learning how to build a system that no longer transforms the purity and sanctity of spirit into positive and negative comes into us as pure energy. It leaves us as <laughs> war, this, poverty, greed, anger, ambition, you know, tension. So we got to change ourselves so it leaves us as love and compassion and joy, simplicity. I believe uh, it. It's. Uh, I may use different words, but it, the meaning is the same. I believe uh, contrast is the engine of manifestation. Yes, I agree. But the contrast is not from a higher source. All the contrast and conflict takes place when this purity of spirit enters a human being, and then a lifetime of habit, conditioning, what we think is right and wrong and blah, 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 that's what creates the madness. 
That's what creates the madness, not God and spirit and energy. It's human beings. Mm -hmm. They have to change, for God's sake. Get, I get on a rooftop and say, you got to change. <laughs> and the madness will stop. Well, you know, try to convince 8 billion people to do this. Not going to happen. And it, because it's not going to happen, we have to change. Because we have to get strong enough inside not to allow other people's insanity to destroy our lives. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, if there are no more questions, there will be meditation on Thursday. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you for being in my life, for dragging all of this stuff out of me, which I promise you I listen to also. I am not perfect. I am grateful to be a child of God and to be a vehicle through which all this can manifest. But I also have to grow. And all of you are part of the growth you know, and helping me in my life to do. So God bless you all and thank you. And there'll be class on Thursday and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Thank you very much, Stuart. You're welcome. Happy birthday, yeah. Chris. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> thank you for helping me to be happy. <laughs> okay, see you all soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.